and there were shepherds living in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. That will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appear, with angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the height, and on earth peace, to men on whom his favor rests. Here I am in the vicinity of Bethlehem, in the area known as Megdal Eder, or the Phlox Tower, as known from ancient times. Between the rocky hills, on the boundaries separating between Judean wilderness from the Judean hills, a distance of six miles from Jerusalem, here shepherds dwelled, and not just any shepherds, they were the shepherds who were meant to tend sacrificial sheep for the Temple of Jerusalem. I'm holding a lamb in my hand, while well, actually it should be on my shoulders. This way it gets used to my smell and voice, so to follow its shepherd wherever he goes. It is of the Awasi breed known for its fat tails originated from Mesopotamia, which is nowadays is southern Iraq. Usually, shepherds lived nomadic life, moving from one place to another after water and green pastures. But these shepherds were different. They have settled in one area, as we hear from Jewish sources, that 30 days before the Passover, shepherds were near Jerusalem, supplying sheep for sacrifices. In spring, they got the green pastures. Around them, early summer, they lead them into the harvest fields, grazing on the root of the barley and wheat field. While in summer, they wandered at the nearby hills of Judea, where wild trees grew, and in winter they had to tend their sheep, bringing them food right at the cave stable. Lamping season, which would start between June and November, so newborn lambs had to be taken care of during winter, keeping them warm and feed and away from harm. It was then on that winter night, on the 25th of December, that shepherds watched their flocks destined for sacrificial services in the very same place, consecrated by tradition as that where the Messiah was to be first revealed. Micah 4, as for you, watcher tower of the flock, Megdal Eder, stronghold of daughter Zion, the former dominion, would be restored to you. Kingship will come to daughters Jerusalem. This is what we should imagine when angels appeared to the shepherds while guarding their sheep, sitting at the entrance of a cave around the fireplace at the foothills of Bethlehem in the cold month of December. But let's have a closer look at the shepherds 2,000 years ago.
go to your mom. Shepherds keeping watch in the field. Nearby, tending flocks with agriculture form the basic of the Palestinian economy and sheep raised on the hillside around Bethlehem may well have been destined for the temple sacrifice in Jerusalem. The dryness of the ground made it necessary for the flocks of sheep and cattle to move about during the rainless summer and to stay for months at the time when it is isolated area for the owner's home. Hence, hereby sheep was an independent and responsible job. The Gospels give us an insight into the life of the shepherd as in Luke 15 and John 10, we hear that sometimes the owner himself or his son did the job, but usually it was done by hired shepherd, who only too often did not justify the confidence responsible in them, John 10, 12 to 13. Some of Israel's greatest heroes were shepherds like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and David, Psalm 23. And Jesus, in his teaching, compared God taking care of his people like shepherd taking care of his flock. But it seems that in the first century AD, as we read from the first century AD sources like the Mishnah, the Gospel of John chapter 10, and even that of Phileo of Alexandria, the shepherd, had a bad reputation for being dishonest and even thieves. There is no evidence that the shepherds, the angels, appeared to wear dishonest. Just the image that they were outcasts and sinners would make us think to whom the angels appeared, announcing the news about the birth of a Savior. They lived most of the year outside, away from the town people, abiding in the field, lived out of doors. Flocks were kept outside in this way from April to November and sometimes during the winter in suitable location. They were constantly, you know, with their sh sheep, since the sheep were vulnerable to all kind of trouble. The shepherds made sure that the sheep were safe from wandering off and injuring themselves, as well as danger from thieves and wolves. One minute, the shepherds are talking quiet in the blackness of the winter sky. The next moment, the hillside is ablaze with light and blooming with the sound of an angel's voice. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. This appearance wasn't at a distance, but upfront and personal. The brightness is more than just a mega candle power. It is the radiance of God's own glory, the glory in excelsis. Here, it referred to the condition of being bright or shining bright, splendor, radiance. Throughout the Old Testament, the presence of God is referred to as overwhelmingly bright, burning as fire, such as cloud above the temple by day. God's angels sometimes bear this same bright glory. In this case, the glory shines around the whole area. The result in the shepherd is predictable. Abject terror, terrified, literally feared with a great fear. The angel moves first to calm their fears. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior 
has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This good news, angels, has the inevitable task of being the first herald of the Messiah's birth. Bringing good news evangelizes the message the angel brings is a very good news that the result is a great joy. The angel's message is so broke. The good news, the gospel, is not only for the pious Jews, it is for all the people, sinners, Gentiles, Jews, poor and rich. The baby is not just born to Mary and Joseph. This birth is unto everyone and to everyone benefit. It is also an immediate message. Today, this is the town of David reminding us about the Messiah's child. Connection with his ancestor David. Prophecy indicates that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. And what a fitting prophecy for these Bethlehem shepherds to recall the words of Micah the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the Judean clan, out of you will come for me one who will be the ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom His favor rests. This heavenly army is praising God. It may have been the heavenly choir as in popular Christmas lore. But the scripture doesn't explicitly say that they are singing as the angels in the Revelation. Here, they seem to be chanting in unison or speaking. The content of their praise is to give glory to God and to offer a blessing of peace to men. Glory here is used in another sentence, honor as an enhancement or recognition of status or performance, fame, recognition, renown, honor, prestige. These angels honor God as being highest in special sense. In contrast to earth, the angels promise peace between God and mankind, which essential amount to salvation on earth, peace, good will tell God, extend His peace and salvation to His favored people, those whom He sovereignly chooses or elected to favor and save. We are standing in the traditional spot where the shepherd field is, but it's under the custody of the Catholic Church. But we are within the area of where an ancient place called Migdal Eder was. However, during the archaeological excavations from the 4th century during the Byzantine period, we discovered some caves. And those caves perhaps would have been the caves that the Gospels tells us about. The beautiful kind of tent structure behind me, church, was built by a man called Antonio Barluzzi. Amazing decoration and frescoes the minute you go inside. But what draws your attention is the incredible altar, however, is carried by four shepherds looking to heaven. Let's go inside and see.
And friends, when the angel went away from them into the sky, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem now and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord hath told us. Let's go to Bethlehem. Bethlehem that provided a solution for a family in need, provided a solution for a nation in need, now is providing the ultimate solution for a world in need. It is the birth of a shepherd that's going to lead us to the Heavenly Father, a new exodus from the sin, but to a new promised land, the Kingdom of Heaven. Ooh.